Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us and thank you for your patience. Uh, I'm Afi Amadi, uh, UVM class of 1993 and the president of the UVM Alumni Association. I am so pleased to welcome you all to this virtual town hall event with UVM's 27th president, Suresh Garamella. Suresh, thank you so much for being with us today. Very much appreciate you making the time. Uh, it's really nice to be face to face, uh, even if we have some safe distance between us. Um, we are certainly all eager uh, to hear your thoughts uh, about many of the topics that uh, are on the minds of UVM alums. But before we dive into those submitted questions, now that you've been here 15 months, uh, perhaps you could provide some of your impressions about both UVM and Burlington. Thank you, Afi. Uh, appreciate the Alumni Association hosting this. Uh, as you know, we've only been meeting across uh, Zoom screens and team screens lately, and uh, the few opportunities we have to meet in person, uh, especially with people like you, are certainly welcome. Um, I'm, um, I, I want to assure our viewers that we've taken all the precautions. We're at the right distance and uh, we, we wear masks um, and I'm, I, I will say that I'm very proud and, and just very impressed with our community, with our students uh, for, for all the mask wearing and the following of guidelines that uh, has brought us here. So, um, so I, great pleasure to join this group especially, certainly a spirited group of supporters of alumni that are pleased of, about their association with UVM. And uh, I couldn't be more happy to be meeting with you, learning from you, trying to sort of share with you our experiences and such. Um, you all clearly have a deep love for, commitment for, interest in UVM, and uh, and that's what sustains us. So um, I I will say that we've settled in uh, nicely, as nicely as you know the the somewhat challenging year uh, uh, allows. But uh, you know, I found my favorite um, running trails, and and uh, we found a few eating places we like. Uh, I've also I, I'm I'm very happy that before COVID struck, uh, we were able to travel around the state uh, to all parts of the state, meet our alumni and our legislative leaders in those parts. So I just feel quite comfortable with Vermont. I feel like I um, I have a sense for the place. Um, Northeast Kingdom, Bennington, Brattleboro, all of that, and and some of UVM's jewels like the Morgan Horse Farm and such. So we've been around. Um, great state, mighty state, little state, <laughs> all that stuff. It's all true. So it's uh, it's been it's been it's been a great transition. That's wonderful. Um, you mentioned uh, your your pride uh, in uh, the campus community and taking the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, very very seriously as it should. Um, we certainly have a lot of questions about the pandemic, um, but perhaps uh, perhaps the best way to, to distill all of them is to sort of ask you if you could um, take us through sort of the campus experience uh, from the spring until now and, and how it's going. Yeah, I could write a book about that. Uh, probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question. And truly, I come, I'm, I'm so pleased that today we're sitting here asking the question in a celebratory way in some ways, right? So, so many others have tried and for different reasons, not being able to get to the place we're at today. You know, I must acknowledge our faculty, our staff, our students for their cooperation and their desire to keep UVM open and provide that important learning experience. I'm. I'm thankful for our partners in the community, the city of Burlington, um, the state for sure, Governor Scott and uh, uh, and and Dr. Mark Levine and others in the commission and uh, the commissioner for health. It's just been a really good partnership. We all truly work together. You know, I think that's one of the differences. Uh, that's one of the things that distinguishes Vermont from uh, the rest of the country. Is uh, is is my sense. And so lots of tenacity, lots of collaboration. I think that's that's the root of um, of what seems to be success so far, right? Um, 
so our return to campus has been successful so far. I think we've had about five weeks. Um, everyone seems to be following the required health guidelines, masking, distancing, and all that. Uh, the students signed a green and gold promise, and by and large, everyone's following those. I hear from the community members that they see UVM students wearing masks a lot more than others in the community are. So it just makes me proud of our student community. Um, and certainly our faculty are going to great lengths to teach uh, in, in unusual modalities. You certainly uh, <laughs> teach a class in the Grossman School of Business, so you, you have a front seat to this thing. And thank you for your contributions to our students. Um, Perhaps I could give you a couple of stats which might bring home the, uh, the extent of the problem and challenge and perhaps some of the success, right? So as of this morning, I believe we were close to 60,000 tests that we did, COVID tests, and we've had 22 positive. So the, the positives as a ratio of the total tests, it's much less than 0.05%. That clearly is way, way, way better than anything we're hearing about other cities, other states, other universities. So it just makes me very happy. Our isolation quarantine spaces are not inundated by any means. We have very few in those spaces that we set aside. Um, and so I think this collaboration with the city state has led us there. A couple of, as you walked into this uh, Davis Center, you, you'll have seen some of this. So. We have more than 450,000 face masks and face shields deployed, 17,000 pairs of safety glasses, almost two miles of plexiglass safety shield, um, 4,000 gallons of sanitizer purchased, and more than 40,000 safety signs. I saw, I counted yeah. 100 as I walked up here. So um, I'm still getting used on. to the directionals, the uh, one directionals, where Absolutely, <laughs> there are so many of them. And, uh, and people are, following the rules. I I went to the to a dining hall recently um, to see how things were working and I was stopped. Uh, she, she said I couldn't go in because only people who belong there could go in. Um, I was able to sweet talk her and I did walk in after a while. Um, and now again, even in the dining hall, there's like, like pathways in which they walk. And so I'm just really pleased today not quite heaving a sigh of relief because there's much left to do. I'd like to see us all through Thanksgiving when people can go home and next semester and such. So certainly not the time to let off, um, you know, our caution, but very happy with where we are today. Well, I, th I think it's pretty clear that um, both the commitment by the campus community uh, and the investment are, are bearing the fruit and the results that, that we all hoped for. So that's uh, that's all fantastic news. Um, your your visionary framework document uh, amplifying our impact was endorsed by the Board of Trustees uh, in May. Can you tell us all a little bit more about that strategic vision and and where you see UVM headed under your leadership? Thank you for the question, Afi. Um, I'd much rather be talking about the vision than <laughs> wallowing in COVID, right? So, so many universities and so many institutions ha are struggling with COVID and that's all that is in the mind. The fact that so far our students and our community is cooperating, collaborating as well means that we can look past COVID I will say that we were not overrun by COVID. In our thinking, yes, we paid all the attention, gave it all the attention it needed, but it was important. You've been around for 230 years. It will be around for many, many, whatever, hundreds of years, let's say. Um, so we have to think about the future and think about how to emerge from this, put this behind us and, 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 and make sure we thrive. So, some asked, you know, is it in the middle of a pandemic, is it the right time to think about a strategic plan and a vision? Mm -hmm. And my sense was it is precisely because in, we're in the middle of a pandemic that we should be thinking about a strategic vision. So we call it amplifying our impact. Um, it has three core tenets. And I would say that 
any public remarks I've given ever since I came, including at my installation, uh, effectively said the same thing, which is the three legs of the stool are a focus on student success mm -hmm. and student experience. That's obviously the central piece of our strategic imperatives. If it were not, we would not be a university. So obviously, anything I do, anything I think about, decisions I make are from the, the lens of success for our students while they're here and once they graduate as well. And obviously that means that alumni too, right? So, um, and, and we can speak more about it. Um, a second leg of that stool is, you know, we're a small, but mighty <laughs> university, a public research institution. Um, and so it's important for us to be known for distinctive things. And so what the campus is now thinking about is what defines UVM in terms of if you had to say to someone, come to UVM, it is blank, a little tagline. We uh, thought about it a lot. We had lots of meetings with the deans, with the vice presidents, with, with campus after, and, uh, and thought that a healthy, you know, focusing on healthy societies and a healthy environment was what we're so committed to, and it's in our ethos. So it makes sense then to focus our research efforts on doubling down on those, on, on water in Lake Champlain and all of that stuff. So that, that gives us a, a lens, a, a focus, so that students in Arizona or New Mexico or Peru or Colombia or whatever, uh, if they want to go to a place that is focused on, a, on healthy societies and a healthy environment, I'd like them to think about UVM. And we have a lot of strengths in that across every uh, college, certainly Solana College of Medicine and and but but arts and sciences, they're all part of it. And the third leg of the stool is in something that perhaps, you know, has always been true, but perhaps got a little patina on it, um, a little out of people's immediate um, thinking, and that is we're a land grant institution. We're one of the first land grant institutions. And Senator Justin Morrill, who wrote the Land Grant Act, is from Vermont, mm -hmm. and I have his desk in my mm -hmm. office. So if I ever lose focus, I look at the desk and I know we're a land grant. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means we, as a public land grant, are at the service of the state and our community and how we can help them, et cetera. So those are really the three things. Um, Nothing, none of these is new. It's not something I am bringing to the table. We do all of these things very well today. It's a question of focusing on a few things so that our decisions are driven by that. And that I think encapsulates what our, what our strategic imperatives are. And it, it's not a surprise that it's a two page document. <laughs> I think it's good to keep it that way and stay focused. And, and I certainly recall uh, it being vetted quite a bit um, as uh, it's certainly not a top down no. vision in any way. There was a lot of input right. from the community. Uh, I remember seeing several emails about yeah. uh, requests for input. So I think that yeah, we had um, we sent it around when we had a document, a draft document. And I think within two days we had 1200 responses from the campus. So clearly a lot of engagement, yeah. a lot of interest, and most of it was exciting. Uh, and, and they were excited about the concepts in there. Um, there were some suggestions. We incorporated those we could. So yes, a lot of uh, discussion. It's terrific. Um, <clears throat> so our alums, uh, like like so many other members of the UVM community, uh, are deeply concerned uh, about uh, the struggle against structural racism, um, anti-blackness, inequality. What is UVM doing in this crucial area? Afi, I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, it's on so many minds. I would say it's on everyone's mind at UVM, the faculty, the staff, the students, and of course the community. Um, it's always been important to our community. It's built on sort of equity and fairness and justice. And I would say one of the distinctive features of UVM is, is the advocacy that our students 
um, have a chance to do. And and the fact that we're all very close, it's a small state. Our legislators are sort of among us. Mm -hmm. We talk. We expect very accessible. Be, yeah, <laughs> we expect to be heard. Um, sometimes you expect our. Right, so it, it's uh, so. Uh, uh, we so are I, live, Suresh. So I think <laughs> that um, it's it's what distinguishes UVM. For a long, long time, UVM has been focused on this. Um, we flew the first, we were the first university, I understand, to fly the Black Lives Matter flag, for instance, and then many others picked it up from there. So a lot of focus and and I, I, I think it wouldn't escape our viewers um, that I happen to be the first president of color um, in for this university. We have a board chair, a board of trustees chair, who's, who's an African-American man. Um, I am deeply personally committed to uh, what, what, the, what, what diversity, equity, and inclusion mean. Certainly, we have a lot of work to do. The work in this space will never be done. We need to combat racism. We need to come promote social justice. Um, call out injustice when we see it. Do our best to be anti-racist, which is which is the word that I think is describing more and more the the feeling around campus and around the nation. So, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that working with the President's Commission on Inclusive Excellence. With Wanda Heading Grant, who's Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, with all of our colleges and and the Vice President's units and such, to make sure that these are not just words, but there are actions tied to it. And so, I recently asked for us to list all the actions in this diversity, equity, inclusion space. And it's on our website. It's, it links off of my page on the president's page. The inclusive excellence at UVM is um, all our programs are described there. Um, and I think what's exciting is certainly our vice president for diversity, equity and inclusion drives some important initiatives, especially lately with all the challenges that are happening with the police shootings and such. Um, she is She's engaged in some very good healing, listening, um, uh, sort of virtual meetings, brave spaces, amazing grace, etc. Our identity centers do a great job in this uh, in connecting, but our every college at UVM, every school and college, has embedded in their academic success goals uh, goals for inclusive excellence. So I wanted to yeah. make sure that everyone is aware of what we're doing. I, I invite everyone to contribute to those um, lofty but important uh, lists of items. They cannot just be lists, they have to be actions. Ever since I've arrived, I've asked for ways in which we can move a needle. Let's pick some goals, hold ourselves to whether we're making a difference or not. Yeah. And so I'm just very pleased that every single vice president and vice provost and every dean but every faculty member and every staff member, and certainly our students are so engaged in it. Um, so I, I think retention and recruitment of students, retention and recruitment of faculty of color, um, educational programs to educate our, our UVM community to understand things which may not be as obvious to some as, as, as others, certainly supporting the diverse identities across campus, and, um, and then honoring and recognizing, providing university-wide awards, in this space are all part of that list. And I'd encourage our, our listeners to go to the president's site, look at that inclusive excellence list, invite them to help us with, with wherever they feel they can fit. And if there are things that are missing from there, we'll continue to, um, to be vigilant. But I would like to see real change. I would like to see actions that make a difference. Um. A lot, a lot of fronts there. Uh, certainly, identified areas of opportunity. Are you, are you pleased with the progress overall in that area to this point? It's a great question. I'm not easily pleased, mm -hmm. whether it's about this or anything else. <laughs> I'm impatient, and I'm not easily satisfied. So, we have a lot to do. 
I am pleased with the commitment. I'm pleased with how real the feeling is. Sometimes it's just emotion. And I've tried to bring to conversations that we need to go beyond emotion to action and to changes that a university can make. There are things the government needs to do. There are things that happen in Washington, D.C. that we have less control on yeah. other than to vote. <laughs> Everybody should go vote. And I was a little concerned about the census um, results in Vermont. Um, very pleased today that I think we're second or so in the nation in terms of census um, uh, responses. So there are things that are beyond our control, but what a university can do, a public institution can do, I think we should do. And I would really like to not only focus on recruitment and retention, but the experience of our staff, faculty and students of color while they're here. I want them to feel welcome, they are welcome, and to leave here with a good experience and spread the word beyond. Um, in July, um, UVM announced that it would be uh, divesting from fossil fuels, and that certainly got many people's attention. Can you tell us a little bit about how and why that decision was made um, and, and what it means for UVM's financial health going forward? Yeah, great question, Afi. As, uh, as you may recall, I wrote a, a letter to the community at the end of the first year. You know, I was just looking back um, on what seems like such a challenging year, but really it's important for us not to be clouded, as I've said a couple times now, by COVID. And looking back, it was great to see that UVM as a family accomplished so much. We froze tuition. Um, I think for the first time we'd ever done it at UVM. Uh, we, we set up the Office of Engagement, which, you know, which I discussed a little earlier. And we divested from fossil fuels. Uh, this is a big step and it needed a lot of thought on behalf of the board the investment uh, portfolio is controlled by the board. It's not really a university decision. Um, and I'm very proud of how they went through it in a very thoughtful manner, solicited enormous, um, enormous amounts of input from the community, and they got a lot of input from the community. Certainly our students were very energized about this over the last year as long, you know, well, I've been here, but, but for longer. Um, and so, I think that what it does, what what divesting from fossil fuels did was really to signify something UVM has been doing for 50 years. You know, we had the first cross college um, program, interdisciplinary program in sustainability and environment. Many started after us, but but ours was the first. We have a long track record of action and of scholarship in this space. So there's academic programming, right? It's, it's, it's interesting to me, I could go through any department's faculty uh, expertise, any department's coursework across colleges and everyone, I mean, there is a strong um, presence of environment and sustainability in those, in those offerings. We certainly have a lot of research. We have facilities in this space, certainly the Melosira on the on the lake and many others. Our transportation accounted for this. Our campus programs accounted for this. So it really puts a bow on a lot of the things we were doing. Um, we also have very highly recognized programs like the Sustainable Innovation MBA, the Grossman School where you teach, um, which has been ranked number one in the country and the nation in the world, I believe. Um, and there's a lot of others like the Gund Institute for Environment. There's there's the Rubinstein School, et cetera. So, so much of what happens at UVM was doing this already. You know, someone said sustainability is in our nature. I think that's our tagline. Sustainability is indeed in our nature. So then this, this little thing was holding us up. And um, I certainly was very, very interested in, um, 
in this decision. And, um, and yet it had to be made thoughtfully. We had a sustainability working group from the Board of Trustees that did just an amazing job. The investment subcommittee had to look at the decisions very, very carefully um, because they're obviously financial stewards as well. And yet I think that uh, we achieved this in a methodical principled way and we achieved it also in a way that was much more real, much more immediate and much more complete. The timeline is very short and we're going to divest in a, in a very short time. Um, and I think it's the right thing for us. So this next question is from me, uh, although I am very confident uh, that if other alums were sitting in this chair, they would ask the same thing. Can, can you provide an update on the impact that COVID has had on UVM athletics generally and specifically the athletic facility project? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Afi, I've been, you've seen me at, at basketball games. I'm sure you've seen I, me. I, yes, I have. <laughs> I've seen a lot of alum, alums there, the same faces. I saw Senator Leahy there, <laughs> so I'm not an alum, but so, uh, and I've been to women's soccer, men's soccer, you know, hockey games. Uh, my wife and I have been, and my children when they were here, have been to quite a few games. The one thing I missed was lacrosse. I was waiting <laughs> to go to a lacrosse game and the schedule didn't work out. But anyway, um, that'll happen. So first of all, I'm very proud that the last year was a banner year for athletics, okay? So again, I'm, it's, it's hard to get me down. <laughs> I'm an optimistic, cheerful guy. Um, this was a great year for athletics, okay? Let's not forget that. We had the highest collective GPA ever for our student athletes. Nothing could be more important to me, okay? Student athletes, are referred to as such because student comes first and athlete comes next, okay? So that's very important to me. The, the graduation success rate was very high among the top 15% or so in division one. Um, and, and then there were high profile successes. Men's basketball won the championship for the America East Conference. And I think we could have won higher level championships. I don't disagree. Uh, <laughs> John Becker was named conference uh, 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 coach of the year. Uh, Josh Spidel, what a story. What a, what a beautiful thing. I came here from Indiana, so I'll just say that. Um, and uh, Josh's story was uplifting uh, in so many ways. And, uh, and that was part of the year that, that went by. We, we hired Todd Woodcraft. Uh, from the Winnipeg Jets mm -hmm. uh, NHL's uh, team uh, as our as our men's hockey coach and another first happened right so Paul and Betty Mayer they endowed the first ever women's uh, head coach position in the America East Conference so we had a good year mm -hmm. of course COVID upended some of these things and I think we're looking very carefully at, the, at what the fall and winter sports look like we're on calls. The presidents of uh, AEC schools are on, 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 on the phone often with the AEC, with Amy Huckhausen and others. Um, so we're looking at what, what it means. Jeff Schulman, our athletics director, uh, is in those calls. And, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of things are happening, conditioning and practice and, and such in a, in a safe, socially distanced way and, and with masks and all that. So I, I'm pleased that the workouts, the training and such are continuing and we're prepared to do whatever it is that the NCAA and, and, and the AC and such allow us to do. Um, but like the rest of UVM, athletics is pro proceeding very carefully as they well should. You know, the world's eyes, the state size are on athletics teams and so we're extra careful. And, and to your question, another impact of COVID is that in, back in March and so when we when we went to remote uh, instruction, everything became uncertain. We had no clue what enrollments would look like, what budgets would look like. In fact, so much so that our board of trustees did not um, sort of put off the decision to approve a budget for the next year, which doesn't 
happen often. They approved the budget now in, 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 in late September. But given all that uncertainty, what they couldn't do is that we had to borrow another $30 million of issue, another you know debt of $30 million. Uh, and they said this was not the prudent time to do that. It was the right decision. Um, and so we've put that off, which means that the multipurpose center, um, which by the way, uh, we, we stopped construction there for when the governor issued a stay at home order, but you know, picked up, I think the day of or the day after the governor took, you know, changed the order. So construction's ongoing for those who have not been near the site. There is no hole in the ground. It looks quite beautiful. Lots of <laughs> lots of work going on every day. That, and, that's that's uh, more important for our local Burlington viewers to know that there isn't another hole. Well, this is true. <laughs> I, I uh, was trying to not put too fine a point on that, but uh, didn't want a second hole in the ground. So there is no hole in the ground here. And um, and, and construction is ongoing. However, because the original plan was, and the plan that the board approved, was so tied to student wellness, health, um, sort of this rec and wellness piece of it, we want to emphasize, move up a little bit in the schedule, get that going. So, you know, Gutterson is going through a lot of upgrades. We were hoping to get the rec and wellness thing um, moved up in the schedule a little. Uh, but I will assure your, you and, and, and everyone who's listening that the board could not be more clear on their absolute commitment to uh, completion of the project in as timely a manner as possible. We don't quite know today. The whole country is in uncertain times financially. Um, so we'll be tracking, watching carefully about when we can issue the next set of uh, um, uh, next next debt, you know, next set of loan bonds, if you will. But in the meantime, what we did was because things have kind of um, become more complicated now with, with COVID, we brought on one of the nation's ex, you know, most expert consultants to help us think about how best to accomplish what we want to accomplish and finish the project. So that's ongoing. We expect the consultants to help us. Um, with any creative ideas and such, we'll be communicating to the community often. Um, this is my word for now. In a few weeks, I hope that we'll give you more about what the consultants have told us. And um, I'd like to see on my watch that um, we're able to issue the, the next tranche of uh, debt and, uh, and move forward to the arena as well. Terrific. I'd like to circle back for a moment on uh, the student student success. Uh, I think something that may be particularly relevant for our alumni audience is uh, your view uh, and the significance that you place on internships and real work experience while uh, a student is attending UVM. Could you expand upon that a little more and maybe describe how alums can uh, get into that network uh, to uh, to make sure we connect with students and provide that experience. Absolutely, Afi. So ask me about students anytime and I'll talk to you for as long as you <laughs> want, OK? Um, remember the core of our strategic competitive plan, competitive plan, amplifying our impact, is student success and student experience. That means a lot of things to me. Um, and Patty and I will be actually, Patty Pro, uh, Provost uh, Patty Prelock and I will be doing a podcast soon about what that means and such. So I will share that with you as well. Um, by the way, she's an amazing asset to UVM. She's been the most important partner I have at UVM and in UVM success, including that of the fall return plan alongside Gary Durr. So um, just quick acknowledgement to her mm -hmm. as we talk about students and her entire staff and, and everybody else, of course. So. We want to give our students an unparalleled educational experience, right? That's that's central. We'll do that through continually evaluating what we're doing, assessing it, improving our offerings, making them more current, etc. We are special because we offer a liberal arts core as a foundation to everybody who goes to UVM. That exposure also to humanities and such rounds out a person even if they are in engineering or any other discipline. And so I think enabling our, our graduates to pursue the broadest range of pursuits 
is critical to me. Also critical to me is graduation rates. We are blessed to be among the top five or six percent in the country in graduation rates. I'd like to do better in retention rates and such. Um, I'd like certainly to focus very much on affordability of a UVM education. UVM is an expensive place. There's no getting around that um, for a public research institution. But then again, we don't get a lot of support from our state because of the way the state's finances are. I, I understand why that happens. So it behooves us to never lose focus on affordability. And so I'm very proud that everyone at UVM, including our board, cooperated and collaborated to allow us to freeze tuition for this year and will continue to keep a very strong focus on that. I think it that accessibility to a, to a broad range of students from different economic backgrounds, certainly different color, different identities and such is a big deal. Um, but to your specific question about internships, yeah. I think an important part of the student experience is that I don't want a student to wake up in their fourth year and say, gee, I'm looking for a job now. They should be thinking about careers from their first semester. What they think their career will be can change 15 times during the time. I don't, that's fine, right? I'm not saying they should pick something and stick with it for four years, but we really need to help our students think about pathways post graduation, even from their first semester. And so one way I think of it is to set ourselves a goal, a bold goal that no student will graduate from UVM without either an internship experience, a research experience in one of our labs or so, um, a study abroad experience, a service learning kind of an experience. And often you can do multiple of these in one thing. You can go study abroad and do research there, for instance, or even work with a company abroad. Yeah. So um, I think the kind of sort of rounding of personality that happens from that kind of extracurricular activity uh, is priceless. And so internships are an extremely important focus of mine. Um, one of the first things I did when I moved to town was to talk to Global Foundries. You know, a good number of our students actually intern at Global Foundries, but the CEO and I were speaking and he said, what can I do for you? I said, guarantee us a set of paid internships. Give us some slots and we'll fill them. He did. And so we have slots, paid slots, they pay very well, and we can, we can place in them graduate students, undergraduate students, students from arts and sciences, from business, from engineering. And I just was on the Vermont Business Roundtable. I invited all of our businesses to contribute internships. By businesses, I also mean ski resorts and, yeah. and maple growers <laughs> and dairy farms and all of that, uh, plus NGOs, state um, entities, government entities and such. I really think what I want to do is to have a basket of opportunities that we expose our students to from their first day and say this all this you can do, most of them paid hopefully. And whether or not you end up at Global Foundries for a job later, having done that will give you a much better sense of what careers look like. So my request to you, to the to those that are listening, UVM Connect is a great platform. Uh, please connect on UVM Connect if you haven't already. Um, help our students, mentor them. We certainly uh, are focused on raising financial aid funding for our students and such, but connectivity. Talking to successful alums is so important for high school students, for our, our students that are here, etc. Giving them networking opportunities and stuff. So I really, uh, the one thing you all can do that are listening is to help um, help students understand those that are here, what careers look like, and help high school students understand what they can do so they can come here and such. So, and certainly if they can, we'd like them to contribute up internship opportunities so that our students are are well-rounded um, 
by the time they graduate. Long answer, no, sorry, no, but I, I'm passionate about this. Um, I, I, I wasn't even fishing for a uh, UVM Connect plug, so thank you very much for, for doing that. Um, I, our, time is, our time is running short, so uh, as we wrap up, I want to provide you with the opportunity to deliver uh, any other messages you may have to our community of 121,000 alumni, uh, all of whom I presume are watching <laughs> right now. It's the first time I've spoken to 121,000 people <laughs> at once. So thank you all for joining. Um, this is an amazing group. It's one of the most important constituencies we have, our students, our parents, our alumni. Thank you all. I could stop there. I want to thank you. Um, you've helped make UVM the amazing place it is. Sure. What we're doing in campus is critically important, but once you leave and become such productive members of society, leaders, you know, I just saw yesterday in the New York Times, Bill Pickens was featured. I don't know if yes, you saw that. I did. It was great to see Bill Pickens. I think he's a 1958 graduate, mm -hmm. something like that. You know, Gail Sheehy, who I met with him um, some when we were still traveling. She passed away recently, but there are such wonderful alumni from the 50s through the 2010s. Um, I thank you all because your success is what makes UVM shine. You look good, we look good. So um, I know you carry a piece of this place with you and that's a powerful thing. Alumni support, as I've said, is deeply appreciated. Um, and valued. Certainly, as I said several times, we truly appreciate what you do in uh, helping us recruit our students and our faculty, mentoring our students, building their networks, etc., cheering on the catamounts like mm -hmm. you do, Afi. So your help is more critical now than ever, financial challenges being what they are. Um, every Everything you do for us is even more important today. But I want to say that we don't take your support for granted. We will prove that your support, that we're worthy of your support. And I, I just want to make that very clear that um, every penny that comes in, every piece of effort that comes in from you is greatly valued and we will make the best use of it, right? So, um, as I've said, I think I've made abundantly clear, providing the best experience for our students is my top priority. And I know all of you care so much about that. And so help us with that. And with that, let me put in a plug. I hope you're all tuning in to the entire alumni weekend that's gone virtual on a dime. Our staff have worked really hard uh, to make that happen. I'm participating in some of those. This is one of those events. And um, I hope you'll enjoy. From what I can tell, we've had more people join in because it's virtual than if they than if they needed to travel here. So please keep that up and uh, go cats. Uh, well, again, Suresh, I wasn't fishing for a plug for the alumni weekend events, but once again, thank you. Um, I think that's a, a good place to wrap up. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your candor. Um, I certainly hope that you have the opportunity uh, in the near future to get to meet with more alums uh, face to face. Yeah, I nothing would please me more. And the moment we'll, we're able to travel safely again, I will be back in uh, circulation and look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I just want a, a note to our fellow alums. Um, I, I hope you take an opportunity this weekend uh, to reflect on your time uh, at UVM and the impact it's had on your lives and that those reflections uh, make you think uh, a little bit more uh, and about learning a little bit more about how you can help UVM students succeed. So thank you all for joining us. Please stay safe and healthy. We'll see you soon. Stay safe and healthy.